Okay, this is a little bit of a, an assembly video for some of you that are getting parts now. Uh, we're getting orders and delivering, so... This is our um, motor controller. It's a digital reverse, and it comes mounted on a adapter that fits into the standard chassis for the Atlantic 300s. And in this case, we have a smoke board uh, because we have a smoke lid. Um, not everybody is going to do that. And then these are the rectifiers that take the AC and convert it to DC for the control board. So what I have here is an assembly I just put together. This is with the customer's parts. And we're now printing in black. Um, I had to print black for some other stuff, so I just left it in. And these are all brand new parts. So I'm going to take it apart and let you see how it comes, comes apart and goes together. We have an anchor screw that comes in through the bottom. And we also have some anchor pins that will help lock and lo locate our piece. You see? These pins will fit right into that groove and that will help us center and lock it down. Now, when you need to bring your power boards in, you gotta, or power lines, you gotta remember that your, your wire from your truck has to, this one here has to come up. You can take it up through here. We've got a little gap. We thread it through, or you can take it out the back and bring it around. But both the front and the rear power leads are going to have to tie into this distribution board. We have a little arrow here, so these two are for the rear and these two are for the front. You can mix them if you want, but just make sure if you only have one wire here and one wire here, one goes here and one goes here where it says track, and we put a squiggle to mean AC. Okay, so AC comes in here, and that AC will be routed to both of the re uh, rectifiers, okay? So that's something you're going to have to do with your soldering iron and your wire, is make sure that um, before you assemble everything, you have good good contact to your rivet, and the wire is long enough that when this is in place, this one will come through here or around here and come in, or this one will come across here and come in that way. If they're not long enough, you can add to them and use insulation, or you can take them off and solder a longer wire on. I use um, 22 gauge flex wire from uh, Train Tender. It's really, really good. It's a fine wire and it's braided and it has lots of flex. And that's what I use for all of the track power um, and motor and, uh, and uh, smoke hookup. It's inside this connector that I have on my 302. Um, okay, so let's get going. So we can put this down set that in place we get this board in and there are four holes you only really need to do two opposite corners is what i do and there's a hole there and then you can screw this in a little bit you should hold it you don't need to go too far it's plastic so be careful then we add this part in its little molded groove and you have to make sure that these pieces are not in the way and touching anyway. And then you just hold it in its spot, put your screw in, and tighten it up. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this. This is a, this is a big old body screw uh, that I happen to have, and it works. Or we can put a threaded insert and give you a different screw. If you have a preference, just let us know. Or you can fix it when you get it, you know, do whatever you want when you get it there. Just make sure these things are not touching and this is centered. And there's another screw there. I just didn't put it in for convenience sake. But this is how this is going to be set up. Then you connect your wires like we said. The front truck would come in here like this. 
and you just poke it down that hole, put some solder, flux solder on here and solder it in really tight. Make sure it's tight. Give it a little tug. Then you do the front one, same way. Get it here, bring it over here, cut it to, you know, you don't want too much. Solder that one right there. And then if you want, you can take your voltmeter and uh, put this on the track, turn on your transformer, and you can touch these leads with a voltmeter. You can touch the center leads with a voltmeter, because those are AC. Then you switch your voltmeter to DC, and you touch the outside leads, and look for DC current, depending on your transformer. And then you can touch uh, the positive. Positives are here, here, and here on these. These are the outputs. So you take your right and left uh, positive lead here, negative lead here to the voltmeter, and make sure each one of these is hot, and they should be. The smoke gets its power from the top rectifier, the WEMOS, which is a digital board you don't worry about right now, and the motor control board get their power from the lower one. So you just touch the one you want and make sure you got it. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention. Before you put this guy on, a convenience for you, if you think about it, <laughs> is the motor control board's power. Like I said, it comes from here. Positive comes from here, just like that. And it's going to route down to this positive, which is the outside piece. So you're going to want a smaller piece of wire than this, okay? Something like that. That's all you're going to need. And you're going to go from that positive right there to this positive right here. And what you'll do is you loosen this up. And then you push the wire in that opening right there. And then you clamp it down. Make sure that it's tight. And you give it a little tug. Make sure it's tight. Now, to connect to the motor, and in this case, we mounted this in the front and the motor's down there. You can flip it over if you want, I suppose. It doesn't matter. Um, but the motor, you do the same thing. You raise the, uh, raise the screw up. It's a locking screw, so you raise it up, and that's like unlocking it. Then you push your motor uh, wire in there and lock it down. Then you're going to run this wire out in front, if you look at it this way, right? It would go like from here up to the motor, up. You know, if you have this kind of thing, you can just do it here and plug it in, like that would plug in, you see. Um, or you can wire it directly to the motor. But you line these up before and trim them and make sure they're routed and secured and the right length and all that. And then you're good to go. So you wire up your control board from the output here. It's just plus and minus. Remember that, red to red, plus to plus, all that. Now, why are you so contrary? There we go. And then, put this screw in and tighten it up. Now, you would normally have all your trucks on here. I just happen to have this laying around, so I use it through that. That's a funny, that's a funny thing, isn't it? Okay. I'm going to turn this around, just out of curiosity. Curiosity killed the cat, right? <laughs> Let's see. By golly. Yeah, that'll go either way. Well, this is more of a convention. Um, you see, I left a little trough right there for that wire. If you want to run it here and then back to here, you can do that. So this boy goes like that. Leave those two holes open if you wish. Now, you can bring this guy in. Same, same. It's all the same. It's just flipping around. It looks like it's just almost exactly in half. I didn't realize that before. Okay, there you go. Now you're set up just like mine. Boom, boom, okay. Wire it up, you're ready to go. And if you run this just like you would your um, um, digital reverse, um, forward, neutral, for reverse, neutral, that kind of stuff. And it won't click, but it will change the direction of the motor through the uh, umbilical or however you want to connect it to the motor. Now, the other thing people are asking for, and I'm getting ready to ship this one out, 
is the firebox. And we have one here, partial, because I had to put this piece on top. And when you do the firebox, it actually allows you to use a connector. And that means you can get the K5 truck, trailing truck, and put that in there. And that makes this engine really nice, I think, when it has that. I have that on my Christmas train. So the firebox will come like this. It uses body screws, and when I say body screws, they're the kind of screw that you use to screw the train body on, uh, the tender or the um, passenger car. This thing will align and just slide right in, just like that. And then these screws will go into this post here. And you again, you don't, this is plastic, so you don't go too nuts. Uh, you just snug it, and I mean not mash it in, just snug. Like right there, That's all you need. The plastic captures it. This just keeps it from flying out. Okay, and now this, <coughs> you get another mounting screw or a rivet, whatever suits you. This one is still riveted, so I just left it. But you can put a mounting screw in here and screw this up. The thing is, you want to use a shoulder screw uh, because you don't want that to be clamped. You want it to be free so it can pivot. Okay, now. In this one, there's holes for the flicker fire. And I just happen to have some old lights that I'm going to send along, but um, the flicker lights would actually be, uh, I'll use a pencil. The lights would actually be put into these little tiny holes here. And I run these wires into here and glue them down so they don't get in trouble. These other holes are for things that you want to mount on front of the firebox, okay? Throttle and other stuff. All right, so you put them in there. In this case, just for this guy, I happen to have these, so I'm going to send them. They're a little bigger, and what that's going to require is uh, the, the lens is right on the end, and it's a little round. You're going to have to get something like a uh, pin vise, and get in here and you're gonna to have to drill those little holes just enough to get that in there and what you'll want to do is glue them into that hole um, with something like super glue and then you're gonna to want to route the wiring up through these little guides that we have here to make sure they stay out of the way and then all you need to do with these two wires is just put them on, um, you can put them on the motor, um, trim them and, and uh, strip them and put them on the motor. If you have a headlight wiring, you put them on the headlight wiring. If you have smoke, you can put them on the smoke. This has a lot of voltage conditioning built into it, so it can handle um, whatever we decide to put into it, okay? And then these are uh, one red, two orange, and they, they flicker. And so when you put those in and you have it turned on, turn your engine on, you'll see the red and the yellow lights flickering at different rates. So what I've done with my firebox is I've designed this for the lens of the Alco diesel. You see that? So the lens will cover that and that serves as a diffuser. That'll diffuse the light, make it more look like just a glow. It won't look like three lights, okay? So when this is going down the track, it looks like, hey, you got the fire going in the firebox, and you can see it. It's really neat. Plus, you're hiding uh, the motor and whatever else is up in there. Now, when I do this, I typically run all my wiring down underneath and then bring it up, up under the motor. Um, in this case, instead of plugging it in here, I run it up in here. Just have it come along. The, this is connected there, right? I just run it along there and then run it up between the brushes and then distribute that wire out. And that's where you can wire in your lights if you want to as well. So anyway, that's sort of um, a little how you put it together, what you're going to get, what it's going to look like, and um, what you'll need to do to um, put it together. I'll do diagrams. I'll have other stuff. I'll do more formal sessions online too so that you can all see how that works. So this will come to you pretty much uh, just like this. You just take this screw out, put it on your 
put that notch in there. Now, if you have a different engine, like a Hudson or a Northern or whatever, I'm going to make this without the notch in it, but with the screw to hold this together. But in that case, I don't have uh, the fittings for all the engines yet. So in that case, you would look on here where, like I have an extra hole here for another uh, spot that I was going to use at one point, like right there, see it? Right there, it lines up. I could put another screw there. So if you're using another engine, you can use this screw hole, or you can put in a new one if you want. Uh, just don't drill it with when the board's in, you know, you go through, right? A uh, tiny hole in here, find a hole on there, line them up, and then put your screw in that way. Or the other thing we have is what we call foam tape, and it's tape made with foam, and it's sticky on both sides. So you can cover foam tape down here to cover Frankentrain, but I guess it's okay. Cover the foam tape, and then you know, line it up where you want to put it, and you just press it down, and it'll stay pretty good. I've been using that for years to put uh, the old... Uh, ERR boards in. So that's another way you can mount these in your, if you don't have the, this particular um, plastic uh, shell tender frame. Okay, so that's just a quick run through of what the parts are, what they look like, what's going on, and several people have ordered the motor, a couple of people ordered this, I just wanted to put it together so there, it was something out there in case you can't search my site, look for firebox install or motor control install and I'll put together other uh, slides briefings you know how to do it a little more precise and professional this was uh oh I'm sending this stuff out I better give them something to use here and if you have any questions send me a message um, either through Facebook or uh, put it online with uh, YouTube and I'll get back to you okay gang that's the wrap working on Leon's engine, so I better get back to it. Okay.